Welcome to Electro Online. Here we're going to begin to look at the catenary and try and understand, first of all, what it is, why we use this, and how we get the equations and what the equations mean. In the beginning, it looks quite complicated. And then after a while, you'll see, okay, now I know how to do this. But it's going to take several videos to get to that point. So we're going to start very simple here with the concept of what the catenary is. Let's say we have a cable like this, and of course a cable typically when you span it between two points, like between A and B, of course there will be some sag to that usually, and most cables do experience a load. But let's say that the only load on the cable is the weight of the cable itself. Now normally if you have a very light string here, you can pretty well tie it up in such a way that the cable is virtually straight. The total force pushing down on that due to gravity will simply be the weight per unit length times the length of the cable and notice that the length of the cable here is simply denoted by x and this would be a uniform load and noted that the forces is uniformly distributed across the cable even when there's a slight sag to the cable like this where the length of the cable here is slightly longer than the distance between the two supports Typically, we can still assume that that's close enough where we can say that the force is equally distributed across the cable like here. And so the total weight of the cable is equal to the weight per unit length times x, even though x and s are not quite the same, but they're close enough. The problem comes in when there's a lot of sag on the cable like this. Then you see, due to gravity, that the forces representing the force per unit length on the cable tends to get closer and closer and closer together in the x direction because, after all, that what matters is the distance between the points along the arc of the cable. And that means that the total weight, the force that acts as if it's the total weight of the whole cable, is no longer at the center of the cable, like it will be in these two locations right here. It'll be somewhat to the right of center, and we don't know how far to the right. But in other words, the line of action of W, the total weight of the cable, is not known in this particular case. It becomes an unknown. You know that it's closer to the right support than to the left support, you just don't know by how much. What we do know is that when we have a typical cable like here that hangs under its own weight, that we find what we call the lowest point on the cable. And that's an important point, and that will be a certain distance below the attachment on the left side and a certain distance below the attachment on the right side. We get to those things later. But what is important is that we set up a coordinate system on this cable where the y-axis goes right through the lowest point on the cable, Notice the origin is not placed there. The origin is actually placed below that point, some distance, let's call it C for constant, below where the lowest point on the cable is. Later on, we'll show you how to calculate that C. That C is a particular value depending upon the other parameters on the cable, and you'll see how that's calculated. Let's pick at any other arbitrary point on the cable right here at the position x, y relative to the origin. And then you can see this would be the arc length of that piece of the cable. If we now take that piece of the cable and place it over here, let's look at all the forces acting on that piece of the cable. Here again, this is the lowest point on the cable, and therefore the only tension at that point is in the horizontal direction. Let's call that T sub naught and you'll find that the T sub naught will be the lowest tension point on the entire cable. The tension will increase as you get closer to the endpoints. It will increase as the angle relative to the horizontal increases. Here's the total weight of the cable. Again, notice that that point will be to the right of the middle of the cable. Again, we don't know how much to the right. And that is equal to the weight per unit length of the cable times the length of the cable along the arc of the cable. Here we have the tension at the end of the cable, which will be pointing in the direction that the cable points at, at that particular location, it'll be some angle theta. Notice we can take these three forces, those are the only three forces acting on the cable. W, capital W, is the total weight of the cable acting downward because of gravity. T sub not acting horizontally, and T acting at the angle that you find at the end of the cable closest to the support point. If you then sum those vectorially, this is what those will look like. And again, Ws 
if we don't know the arc length, if we don't know the length of the cable, we will not know the value for W, and that is also one of the problems. We don't know the angle, we don't know the arc length of that section of the cable. Quite a few unknowns, and then eventually also see we don't know what that C value is. All those things will need to be calculated. But we still get that triangle. If we can somehow measure that angle or calculate it, notice we have this relationship. There's T sub naught the tension at the lowest point in the cable in the horizontal direction. There will be T at any other point on the cable, wherever that happens to be, depending upon the angle. If that point, of course, is over here, the angle will be not as large. If it's higher up, the angle will be larger. Therefore, the tension will increase depending upon where on the cable we're looking. Also, notice that we can find the value of the tension at any point in the cable as being equal to, and let me get rid of this square here, because otherwise, notice that I took the square root of the right side. I know that t squared equals this square plus that square, but if I take the square root of that, that goes away. And notice we get t sub naught squared plus omega s quantity squared, which is, of course, the weight of the cable. Later on, we'll show you how to calculate all those other parameters. One more thing we need to notice here that if we take any point on the cable and we take a small section of the cable, we can call that a small ds, and notice we have a small dx from this point to that point, a small dy from that point to that point, and we can also write that ds, a small section of the cable, is equal to the square root of dx squared plus dy squared, and we will need that later on as well. But here, at least, you can see why things need to be handled differently. This will not be a parabolic shape. You'll not be able to draw an equation that describes that. It'll depend. As the sag changes, the shape of that arc will change as well. It will constantly change. And so that's the difficulty of working with catenaries. So if you need to know what they are and how to calculate all the parameters of a cable, the length, the sag, and so forth, and the tension in the cable at the bottom, at various points, and at the attachment points, stay tuned and we'll have quite a few videos help you understand the concept of the catenary.